So today on Now Let's Review, Brent and I are going to be showing you how to use the GoPro Fusion and how to get the footage into your computer and then turn it into Premiere Pro footage. Now let's review. So you can buy the GoPro Fusion on shop.gopro.com and it's about $700 and it's a brand new product. GoPro just released it a few months ago. And so we're going to show you real quick how to use this GoPro Fusion and then we're going to sit down and talk about our opinions on it and what we think of the product. Okay, so Brent, here we have the GoPro Fusion. Yeah. It's kind of a cool device. It's, kind of, it's neat. It's a neato thing. It's kind of neat. It's neato, yeah. It's, it's, it's groovy. So let's talk about, what, like... What's going on with this thing? So the camera comes with a few different things. Basically, okay. it comes with this little tripod here, which, as you can see, has uh, three different levels on okay. top of the uh, basic regular level, nice. and which is kind of cool. So you can see it gets pretty high here. Yeah, that's actually... Wait, a lot higher than I would have expected from this like a little arm piece here. Yeah, so the way that you, you open that is basically you just turn it to the left, it kind of unlocks, Yeah. and then you can unlock it, and you can lock it back into place by twisting it to the right. Okay. And uh, you can also use that as a little selfie stick. Nice. Which is kind of interesting. That's, that's convenient too. So the USB-C cord comes with the GoPro, and on the side here, there's this little... Uh, like latch that opens and you can plug in the USB-C and it also comes with this little hard case right here yeah. kind of a soft hard case yeah but you kind of need because uh, one thing about the camera that is maybe isn't so great is that it has the cameras on both sides the, the lenses are on both sides of the camera so it makes it really difficult to kind of like put it down without putting it on the lens yeah, itself yeah, which is not great tough. That's not great because you don't want to scratch up the lens. Okay, so the battery for this thing is pretty simple. It's just the, basically like the USB-C port, which you can actually use to charge the battery. Okay, yeah. Um, the battery comes out. It's got this little tab like a regular GoPro, and it's a pretty large battery. Hmm. And also inside the battery casing is where you put the two SD cards. Oh, yeah. Huh? They're kind of really tucked away in there. Maybe we'll be throwing up a uh, close-up shot on the yeah. screen right here. Yeah, you can see it's kind of hard to take them out yeah, there. Yeah, actually, it's like, it's kind of tricky. I mean, it's not, yeah, it is a little it's tricky. not horrible, but yeah, you gotta, I got skinny fingers, so I have an easier time kind of getting in there. Okay, so basically the how you want to access the menu on this GoPro, it's a little tough. Um... So what you have to do is there are two buttons. There's the mode button and the record button. And you use those two buttons basically to access the menu and mm. control the menu. Okay. So once you have the LED screen on menu, you can tap the mode button to change what mode you're on. It is a little uh, com complicated using two buttons for such a uh, extensive menu, Yeah. Um, which I don't like, but it's, it's nice to be able to have that on the camera. And uh, it also, for ease of use on a field, has voice recognition. Mm -hmm. So you can use it to start recording or stop recording. And so we did a little bit of a test of that to see how it worked. GoPro start recording. That was sick. That was sick. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick field test to show you how uh, well this works, so here we go. Okay, so now we're doing a field test of the Fusion where uh, we've dragged the file of this video into Premiere, and we are using Premiere Pro to remap everything that we were recording and decide where we want things to be looking at. So right now you're looking at Brent recording. Oh yeah, and now you're looking at me. And uh, now you're checking out the lights that we've got going on. And so, uh, yeah, we, we did this in Premiere Pro, and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Okay, guys, so the first thing that we're going to want to do when trying to get the GoPro Fusion footage onto your computer is you're going to want to first make sure that you have the GoPro Fusion Studio app downloaded. You can get this app uh, with the GoPro Fusion. We'll leave a link in the description below. And once you've downloaded it and opened it up, make sure that you have your camera plugged into the computer through its USB-C port. And we're going to select Browse Camera Media. Then it's going to look for the Fusion. And as you can see right there, it just found it. So now it's going to open up the files that are on the camera. Okay, and as you can see here, we have a couple different options for what you can do with the footage once you have the Studio app opened. And we're going to select uh, one of our clips here. And let's just see what we've got, what different things we can do. So you can see we can uh, check out the overcapture. And that's basically going to uh, change the way that you're viewing the angle. 
you can adjust the different uh, parameters like the yaw, the pitch, the field of view. And uh, that's just kind of something that you can use in the beginning to test out your footage before you render it. And there's also this cool little feature where you can adjust the Lumetri color. Okay, so before we render this footage, we're going to make sure we have the right thing selected. So we're going to want to make sure that it is selected for editing. And we're going to also make sure that it is exported at the highest quality. And there we go. So now it's rendering. And in our experience, it takes about uh, 40 minutes for like a four minute long clip, which is quite long. But this is a new product, so it's going to take a while. And uh, we're going to let it render, so we'll come back to it once it's done. Okay, so now that we have our clips finished rendering, we're going to open up a Premiere Pro file and we're going to create a new project. We'll call it Fusion Test. So if you're not familiar with Premiere Pro, you can get it with the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, which is about $50 a month if you're not a student. And uh, basically that comes with Premiere Pro, After Effects, and a bunch of other uh, Adobe softwares. So for Premiere Pro, we do a bunch of tutorials on it on this channel. We have a bunch of basics videos if you want to check those out, but we're going to skip the basics for now and just get straight to the fusion stuff. Okay, so now we're going to open up the footage that we just rendered, which is this video right here. And we're going to just drag that right into the project folder in Premiere Pro. Okay, and we can go ahead and close that. And now here we have our footage. If we double click it, it'll bring up the source monitor. Now, as you can see, it kind of stretched everything out, but it's got all 360 cameras stitched together for you already, which is kind of convenient because you don't have to worry about any stitching. That all happens in the rendering process. So once we've opened this up, what we're going to want to do is right click and create a new sequence. And the settings that I like to use are the ARRI 1080p and then 30 frames per second. And we'll call this sequence test and hit enter and that'll create this new sequence this is very important because if you open up a sequence using these settings it's going to export as a 360 video and we don't want that we just want it to be a regular video so that we can control what we're looking at so let's take this and drag it into our new test sequence and then this box will pop up it says this clip does not match the sequence's settings change sequence to match the clip settings and we're going to say keep existing settings so now as you can see the footage is cropped quite a bit and so now we're going to search for our effect that we're going to use for this which is going to be over here in the effects tab and we're going to search gopro vr and as you can see a bunch of different uh, effects come up for gopro vr and the one that we're going to be using is gopro vr reframe so we can either double click that to add it to our video or just click and drag and let's go to our effect controls here in the top left and now we're going to click on our GoPro VR reframe effect and we're going to look at the different parameters that we have here. So we have field of view, which is going to basically be zooming in and out and you can zoom about this far out. Okay, so now we're also going to check out our yaw, which is essentially just like our horizontal uh, left to right kind of movements there. And we've also got pitch, which is sort of up and down depending on where you're looking and roll. So it is a bit tough to use these different parameters, but we're going to go through it pretty simply and just take a look at the, uh, the most simple way to use them. So I pretty much just stick to field of view and yaw and sometimes pitch, um, but we're going to show you all three just today for, for example's sake. So let's get into this. So we'll zoom in a little bit on my face here with field of view and move to the left with our yaw parameter and we'll move the pitch down a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select our little toggle button over here, the stopwatch. And we'll select that for our field of view, yacht, and pitch. And that has created three keyframes. So if we zoom in, you can see that at this point in the timeline, whatever you have selected for these parameters is what is going to be shown in your video. So let's move forward on the timeline just a little bit. And we'll move the yaw so that we can show our good friend Brent over here. And let's change our pitch to zero. And let's move our field of view back a little bit. And maybe we'll move the yaw a little bit more. Okay, so now if we zoom out, you can see that there are different keyframes controlling what the camera is now looking at, which is really helpful because if you're using uh, this camera for any kind of outside action, you can pretty much determine where you want the camera to be looking at at any point in post, which is cool because if you miss something, uh, you can go over it and post and make sure that you have 
exactly what you want for footage in your video. And it looks pretty much just as good as a regular camera. It's actually really, really high quality. So, so now I'm going to show you one more thing before we go back to the review, and that's going to be smoothening our transitions. So there is a smooth transition parameter down here, but I find that it isn't really as intuitive as using ease in and ease out keyframes. So what we can do is select these keyframes, right click on them, and then go down to ease out. And we'll do the same thing for these keyframes, and we'll click ease in. And now that's going to basically create this curvature of movement. So we can actually see it right there, how it's easing out of the movement and easing back into it. So let's take a look at how that looks. So as you can see, that was pretty smooth. So that's how you use the GoPro VR reframe effect in Premiere Pro. And that's how you get your footage from your GoPro Fusion into Premiere Pro. Okay, so now we're checking out how the Fusion runs with the GoPro app. And here we have the Fusion that we've connected. And as you can see, it connects pretty quickly. And you can actually use your phone and tilt it and it will uh, adjust to the 360 camera, which is really cool. So now I'm lifting the Fusion and moving it around. And you can see there's a little bit of lag, but it's not too bad. And you can move it around with your finger, which is really cool because you can see in real time uh, what you can look at later on with the 360 footage. And you can also use the phone's gyroscope to actually control what you're looking at, which is really cool. And now here we have the record function, which works really well. And then below it, there's this little yellow icon, uh, which tags a point in your video. So if you see anything cool while you're recording, you hit that little button and it will tag it and save that spot. So overall, I'd say the app is actually pretty good with this Fusion. Okay, Brent, so what are your final thoughts on this uh, GoPro Fusion? Okay, so here's the deal, right? In concept, I like this camera. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Some of the stuff that it can do is really neat. Um, I like the whole idea of editing 360 video after the fact within Premiere. It's, it, you know, while it does take a long time to get into Premiere, it, once it's in there, I feel like it works pretty well. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to edit it um, and move it around where you want to. But the actual device itself, it has a lot of issues. Yeah, it definitely It has does. a lot of issues. Um, there's a lot of weird kind of like uh, design flaws or things that maybe aren't as well thought as they could be. Like we mentioned, like the way the SD cards are located in the camera are not ideal. Having the two lenses here and not having a great way, it makes it awkward. Like you can't really put the camera down yeah. when you want to, especially when you hook it up to the computer. So I said, the cord it comes with is very short. You're probably mm -hmm. going to want to buy a longer one so that you can keep the camera in a secure position while it's plugged in. I also found that like when it's plugged in, it's um, maybe it's just our computer, who knows. Um, if you guys have one, you know, comments below, let us know what your experience has been. It's very glitchy when it's actually plugged yeah. in. It's kind of like connecting and disconnecting, yeah. and going back and forth. Sometimes and forth. it shows up in the Fusion Studio app and sometimes it doesn't. Right, there were times where we're like, we'd have it plugged in, we would try to import the footage and it wasn't recognizing anything. Yeah. And then other times it would. There was a whole SD card issue that, yeah, we, had, that you, we had no idea about. When you take the SD cards out yeah. and plug them in the computer, that's another issue too. Yeah. We can't figure out how to get those files into the GoPro Fusion Studio app. Right. So that's kind of another issue just with the SD cards in general. And mm -hmm. we ended up having to spend a lot of extra money to get the faster SD cards. Yeah. So a lot of problems. I, I would say that they did rush it to market a little bit. Probably. Because like that, in concept, it's cool. And like when it does work, it, it works. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, the stuff you can do. And I do like, like the accessory that came with it. Yeah. That tripod slash selfie stick is really fun. Like I like we were saying, I would love it even on its own without the camera. Yeah, it's definitely. Pretty, that's pretty cool. And like what it's capable of is cool. But like there's just so many kind of weird glitchy things right yeah. now that feel like Maybe they could have spent a few more months working out those bugs before getting it out. Definitely, and I would say too that the that uh, the Fusion Studio app and its cohesiveness with Premiere Pro is actually really well done. Yeah, I think that's, that, it's, that is good. Yeah, I mean we we showed you how to bring it in and use it, and it's really uh, pretty simple and it works pretty well. Right. But yes, the hardware and it, the camera gets very hot. Yeah, that was another thing too. It does heat up really quickly, which I guess. I don't know, is sort of a GoPro issue. I don't feel like yeah. the previous GoPros were as bad. This heats up a lot more, it does. in my opinion. It does. Uh, another thing I would say, too, is the actual, like, weaving the footage and exporting it so they can bring it into Premiere it takes a really yeah. long time. It takes, like, 40 minutes. 40 minutes for, like, a four-minute clip, which is yeah. really long. And the microphone isn't great 
I would say too. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. It's it's, it's GoPro what you'd expect level. from GoPro. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing special. It's kind of right on par with any other GoPro. Yeah. So what do you say uh, we give this a little bit of a rating out of ten? Out of ten? Yeah. Okay. I'm going. Hmm, I'm gonna go six. Since more yeah. of like a, a like an a like a uh, I don't want what's the word aspirational or like a yeah. uh, like. I think it potential it has the potential yeah. to be better than what it is, and it does. maybe they'll fix some of that stuff with updates and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But as the product stands right now, it's it has the potential. It's just not quite there. Yet. I would I would agree completely. I would also say six. I think yeah. six out of ten mm-hmm. is what you're going to get for this. Uh, for seven hundred dollars, I wouldn't say it's worth it right now. Yeah. But soon, I think that hopefully um, they fix, fix the they fix a lot of the problems that it's having right now. And then because the, what it actually is capable of doing is really awesome. Yeah. And if they fix some of those bugs and some of the weird quirky stuff, then it would definitely be a much higher rated. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, that was our review slash uh, tutorial on how to use the GoPro Fusion. Yep. So, uh, thanks for watching this video. Yeah. Don't forget like subscribe. Patreon, if you're interested. Yes, please. Um, that there are other products you want us to review or you're interested in, let us know in the comments below. We'd be more than happy to check them out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And that, that's another thing, too. Random beeping. Yeah, random beeping. It's <laughs> part of the GoPro fusion. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Now let's review. For more tech reviews, subscribe below. Please like, share, and comment any tech you'd like to see us review in the future.